Hi guys, it's John from Android Addict and this is a review of the Doji V20 Pro. So this was sent to me by Doji and they've let me have a play with it for the last couple of weeks. And this is my review of this new budget thermal imaging smartphone. I say thermal imaging because it comes equipped with a thermal imaging camera. So we're gonna go over that in good detail in a minute. Let's just go over the specs first and see what you get for your $500 which is about 400 pounds recommended retail price. I have put a link to this in the description. If you want to pick one of these up, it is an affiliate link, which helps support the channel. But let's go over the specs of this phone first, and we'll see whether this is something you might be interested in. So this comes with a Dimensity 700 processor, which is an eight core CPU. It comes with a Mali G57 GPU, which is more than okay for most games on lower settings. It has 12 gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of storage, and this is a nice 6.43 inch full HD AMOLED display. And it does come with Gorilla Glass underneath the pre-installed screen protector here. Now it also comes with a 6,000 milliamp hour battery. You can see it's quite a thin phone, but yeah, it doesn't feel very heavy considering it's a 6,000 milliamp hour battery. So this has all the usual bells and whistles that you'd expect, NFC, Wi-Fi calling, Android 12, it's a dual SIM, 5G or micro SD expandable up to two terabytes. So this is more than good enough as a sort of daily driver for most people. Let's just have a quick look over the phone. So on the front, you can see obviously we've got a LED notification. We do have the front facing camera as well. This is a 16 megapixel camera. You can see here the built-in screen protector and my greasy fingerprints are on there already. On the left-hand side here, we have the dual SIM or micro SD and SIM card slot here. We also have the customizable key here, so you can customize that in the software to open an app or perform an action, depending on how many times you click it. On the bottom of the phone, we have a USB-C of our charging port. This does come with a 33 watt charger in the box, as you can see here, and that will get your phone charged in about an hour and a half, up to 100%. We have the microphone here on the bottom as well, as well as the speaker. And on the right hand side here, we have the fingerprint reader, which works pretty well. I've seen better. We'll test that in a second. And we also have the volume up and down buttons, which have some nice feedback to them. So yeah, the fingerprint reader isn't the fastest in the world. You can see here, it takes a moment to unlock the screen. I mean, it recognizes your fingerprint straight away, but it does take a moment for that screen to unlock. On the top of the phone, we don't have anything very interesting, but on the back is where the most interesting part comes. So here on the back, we've got this lovely sort of leather texture feeling glass touch design here. It's nothing I've ever seen before. It's very strange, but it feels nice to touch. It is quite smooth and it doesn't have a huge amount of grip particularly, but this phone does come with a case actually pre-installed on the device. So you'd be absolutely fine when you've got this case on anyway to not worry about the grip of your phone and dropping it. I mean, obviously it's a rugged device anyway, but uh, just to let you know, there is a case included. So on the back here, we have a nice array camera setup here. So we've got a 64 megapixel primary camera. We've got the 24 megapixel night vision with our infrared LEDs as well. We have a dual LED flash at the bottom here. And here is our infrared thermal imaging camera. And this is the thing that you're going to be buying this phone for. This can obviously detect infrared heat and you can then monitor and look at anything which gives off some kind of heat signature. And we're gonna go over that in more detail very soon. So I'll just quickly show you the case here. So this does come with a little stand as well, which I really like. I do like cases with stands on. So you can pop your phone down and have it in a view there for consuming media. It doesn't work the other way up, but yeah, it is nice to have this case included. And I would recommend keeping that on all the time because as you can see here, your lenses are sticking out and they do need that extra protection here. So what can we say about the software itself? Well, this is the usual Doji software. It's nice and fast, nice and smooth. Now this is only a 60 Hertz display, sadly. Just the usual you'd expect from Android 12. And it doesn't come with a huge amount of pre-installed software. We've got the usual children's space here. We've got the easy launcher, this dynamic box game space. We do have an FM radio. This will require a external headset with a USB-C to three and a half mil adapter which I'll link down below if you want to pick one of those up. But yeah, it all works absolutely fine. And as you'd expect from Doji software here, we do get a nice little toolkit here, and this allows you to run various different tools here. And again, this could be helping you when you're out and about in the wild. If you need to find your bearings and work out where you are, then you've got all the tools required to do so. So this is 5G, as I said, and I've been testing it with voice and it sounds absolutely crystal clear. Welcome to your voicemail. 
You don't have any new messages. Name menu. To leave a voice message, press 2. To work with your voicemail greetings, press 3. Two. So yeah, I've had no problem at all making and receiving calls on this. There's been no issue with the other person hearing me. So yeah, it's nice that we do have 5G on here. And as you can see, it's uh, using voice over Wi-Fi at the moment. So if I turn off my Wi-Fi, we'll get that little 5G logo there. So yeah, it's working really well on 5G. So if 5G is a must, then this is obviously going to be absolutely fine for you. So what we'll do is we'll go over the Infuray app here and see exactly what you can do with this phone. Okay, so we're gonna zoom out a bit for this just so you get a better idea as to how this works. But basically inside the app, you're greeted with this screen. So it's in the quick mode to start with, and this will allow you to basically have a look at objects and determine their temperature. So if we have a look here, you can see my hand clearly in the picture is obviously the hottest thing at the moment at around 37 degrees. And you can see when I rub the tummy of our Android figure here, it does heat up a bit and you can get the idea of how this is working. What I'll do is I'll just go over the various different things you can do in this app. Now, I'm not an expert in thermal imaging, but there are some videos included with the phone which will tell you exactly how all the various features work. So let's carry on and just have a quick look through the settings here. So we'll just look at the menu to start with, and these are the different settings in here. So you can set up thermometer mode. So if you want to just get the reading of a human temperature, you can use this to do so. You have the fill light, so that will turn on the LEDs to fill the area with light. You can set different ranges here. And again, I'm not an expert on thermal imaging, so I'll assume the thermal imaging people out there will know exactly what these all mean. Now the continuous capture is quite good. You can obviously use this to set your phone up somewhere and just continually capture images of the temperature of something over time. You have some advanced settings here. So if you want to switch yourself to Fahrenheit or Kelvins, you can do so. You do also have this image align utility. So if the image is not quite aligned up, you can see it's not 100% aligned with my fingers. So what I can do here is take a picture and I can now move the image across and get it to line up with my hand and then save those settings. You can also rotate the image around if you need to. So those are in the advanced settings. So global temperature, when that's enabled, you always get a constant reading in the middle of the screen as to what you are looking at. And you also get a couple of other markers here which will monitor other areas of the temperature. So if I just pop my hand down here for a moment, we can see here, I can now check those temperatures out as it slowly cools down. So that's quite nice. We do get the temperature settings here, so you can change those settings in there if you need to. We do also have the image pattern. Now this is quite a good one. So this basically allows you to mix the real sort of camera outline here with the thermal image. You can just set it straight to be the standard camera, and then you can still get your details of the thermal image without the thermal image being displayed, or you can just set it to full infrared mode here and just have it as the outline of what you are seeing. So I prefer the IR mode personally, it's a lot cleaner in my opinion, but again, I'm not an expert in thermal imaging, so people may prefer this idea of being able to see the object, obviously, even if it's not really that warm. Now you do get a pro mode as well. Now this is quite good. If we have a look in the pro mode, you get these additional settings here. So let's say for example, we are going to just monitor certain areas of our picture. So we've got our phone set up somewhere and we just want to monitor, let's say, the little Android figure here. So we can now draw a box around there and this will be constantly monitoring the max, the average and the minimum temperature inside that square. So now if I put my hand in here, you'll see the max temperature has now gone up. It's going back down again. So this is a live reading of that box there as to what the temperature is inside it. So that's quite a nice little feature. And you can draw circles. You can have all different sorts of lines, points. So you can really set up a huge amount of detail here as to what you want to capture. If you click on view here, you can see all the details of those different areas that you've set up. And of course you can delete to clear them off the screen. So that's quite a nice one in the pro setting there. I personally just stick with quick because I'm just using this for testing. You can also go into the palette and select what type of palette you want to display. So again, this will just make a slightly different view of your heat source here. So there's a few different ones to choose from. So 
but all of them obviously have their own different effects. I'll leave it on the standard one here. But yeah, that is the thermal imaging camera. You can do the time-lapse option as we mentioned earlier and set it to take a frame every three, five or 10 seconds. And amazingly, you can actually even record a live video from the thermal camera. So I've got some videos that I've recorded, which I'll put on next and you can just have a quick look as to how they work and how it looks. But yeah, I have done some tests with this and the distance you can get on this is really, really good. So I'll put this on full screen in a moment, but this was me walking along some very bumpy hills here. And if we have a look, the distance this can go is actually very far. Now, there were some videos on YouTube saying that this cannot possibly get past a thousand meters. And I was tending to agree with the fact that this is such a cheap phone. But if you have a look here, you'll see that this can actually go out into the distance and pick up temperatures from well over a thousand meters away, in my opinion. That's got to be well over a mile away. But I'll put this on the screen. You be the judge of it yourself, obviously. But yeah, so far I've been really impressed with how well this camera works. Go on to the RGB mode here. You can see what I'm currently walking across. Okay, so I'd say I'm about about 50, probably about 50 meters away from the house now. So let's just have another look at the temperature. So yeah, it's still reading about 47 degrees, so it does seem to be picking that up pretty well. Now, let's just move over here and we'll try and see if we can gauge what sort of distance this can get. Now we know that the sensor is in a mid-range phone. This isn't going to uh, go too far, but if I just turn off the imagery, you can see the distance here that I'm looking at. And if we switch back to the infrared, it is actually picking up things from a long distance. Indeed, you can see I'm not making this up. I'm stood here getting bitten probably by mosquitoes or something but uh, it is actually able to pick things up in the infrared mode, as you can see. So those are just house roof, houses of roofs. Sorry, I can't speak today. Um, and it is picking those up. So very interesting that it can actually reach those distances. Whether the temperature accuracy is correct or not, that is another question. I mean, it's getting up to 27 degrees. If I hold this over some of those buildings. Uh, it's, more, it's definitely more accurate the closer it is, I'd say, 37 to 47 on these buildings which are actually a lot closer to me. But the fact it's even seeing that far in the distance, that's got to be, that's well over a mile away. So yeah, that's well over 1.2 kilometres away that's picking that up. Let's just see what happens when we look up at the sun. Okay, that's more than 170 degrees Celsius. I presume that's probably not a good idea to point at the sun. There are some artifacts on the screen now, so we won't do that again. Okay, so here we are in the bathroom, and you can see here it's quite a nice sunny day, and you can see the heat coming in through the windows here. So you're getting a good range of temperatures that you can see in the video here to give you an idea as to how well this works. So if I move away from the window, we go up to the ceiling, for example, you can see obviously things are a bit cooler. We come down here. We can also look down on the floor. We can see how the heat has been touching the floor. You can just see where I've been stood there. And yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty good uh, pickup here and a good example of what you could use this for. So you could see certainly in the winter, whether you've got any sort of cold spots uh, of air escaping through your window or any drafts coming in. So I quite like the idea of using this uh, to you know, just make sure your house is nice and warm in the winter. Okay, so here we are in the kitchen and interestingly you can see things like plug sockets here that are quite warm or do have warmth to them. That's powering my Alexa, which is sat on the windowsill here. So I thought it would also be interesting to see what happens when you turn on a kettle and see what sort of heat you can see from this whether we see the steam coming out or what happens as it actually starts boiling. So you can really see a ring of heat around the kettle here. A 
And there we are, we can see the steam coming out to the top. Looks a bit like a fire. And yeah, that's reached 100 degrees. So obviously the outside of this is warm to the touch, uh, like any other kettle would be. But um, let's see how it affects this. So you can get some quite cool uh, effects actually. Oh god, that's actually the uh, aluminium of the sink expanding. But yeah, it's really cool what you can do with this. What I'll also do is just pop into the fridge here. We can have a quick look. So something I noticed, if we have a look in here, is you can see things uh, obviously with their temperatures, but I did notice here this pack of sausages is perhaps a bit warmer at the front here because it's quite close to the door. So I could actually push that back and get that more efficient sort of use of the coolness of the fridge here. So yeah, you can do some quite cool things with this. So yeah, overall I've been really impressed with the thermal imaging camera. Okay, so that was the thermal imaging. And like I say, it's really, really good. I was very impressed with it. And it's just so interesting what you can use this thing for. For those in the business who do actually need a thermal imaging camera, this is really something to consider because it's so portable. It does everything else you need it to do and it's not expensive in the slightest. So we'll just have a look at some normal camera footage as well. The cameras on this aren't too bad. You can record up to 2K, which is nice. But uh, yeah, they're not the best cameras in the world, obviously, but they are pretty good for a budget phone. So yeah. Take a look at the videos and photos we've got from here. This obviously does have night vision as well, which we went over. So let's go through those next and then we'll come to round up the end of the video. Okay, so here we are. We have the Doji V20 Pro here and I'm just doing some video recording. This is on the 64 megapixel sensor on the back and it's running or recording at 2K, so that's 1440p. So I must say that the color representation is pretty good. See here. It handles the reasonably blue sky with lots of clouds. And as always, as soon as I start recording the video, it starts getting windy here, so hopefully you can still hear me. Now there's obviously no image stabilisation here, so you're basically going to get what you see when you record. Depends how well and how steady you can hold your hand, of course, as well. So yeah, it's pretty good. Like I say, colours represented really well. See the yellows and the greens here. So yeah, slightly blown out there on the yellow maybe. But uh, what we're going to do now is to switch over to the front facing camera and see how that compares as well. Okay, so here we are on the front facing camera. This is a 16 megapixel camera and the maximum resolution you record currently is at 1080p. Again, obviously no image stabilization to be seen, but pretty readable results, I'd say. The clouds are looking slightly blasted out there, but um, overall colors are looking okay. And this t-shirt here is quite pink, so yeah, it's not too bad at all for the front facing camera. Obviously you're gonna wanna use a gimbal or something if you are gonna use this seriously for vlogging or recording. But uh, overall, yeah, not too bad an experience. Okay, so here we are with the night vision and it's pretty good. You can see the quality is a bit grainy here, but we are in complete pitch black and you can see things relatively clearly, I'd say. It's not bad at all. Now, this doesn't see too far into the distance. Obviously, you're limited by the infrared LEDs that come with this built into the phone. But overall, it's a pretty good experience for night vision for things that are close up. And, you know, if you're just trying to look around and find something in the pitch black, then this would be absolutely fine for that, obviously. Now you can turn on the LEDs as well, which help brighten the surrounding area. But obviously if you're doing that, then whatever it is that you're looking at in the dark is gonna be scared away if it's an animal or something that you're trying to find. 
then yeah, I'd keep the LEDs off. But yeah, it does work pretty well for the night vision camera. So I hope you enjoyed this video review of the V20 Pro. I have been really impressed by this Infiray and the thermal imaging camera here on the back. Let me know what your thoughts are down below though, and don't forget there is a link to this if you want to pick one of these up. They do have some offers on at the moment where you can get some discounts, so if you are interested it's probably worth getting one sooner rather than later. But yeah, overall really impressed with this phone. If thermal imaging was part of my day job I would be happy to use this as my daily driver. We can pop the case on and you can see how it looks in the case, because we do want to protect the cameras as much as possible. And this is how it would look with that included case on. It does add a tiny bit of bulk to it, but you do want to get those cameras protected as much as possible. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions at all, do leave them down below. I will do my best to answer them where I can. And again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.